Welcome back everyone to some very cold and windy fields in Perthshire, Scotland. Now what a day, what a difference from yesterday. Yesterday we had sunshine, we had blue skies, we had temperatures of about 10 degrees or 50 degrees Fahrenheit and today is about zero degrees. What that is in Fahrenheit I'm not sure so don't ask. But it is cold, is the answer, and it is very, very windy. We've got a really, really strong easterly wind today, which is bitingly cold. So I will minimise my filming to try and stay out the wind as best as possible, because there's no way that my microphone is going to cope even with this. We're back on the same field as yesterday, it's just me again. And uh, let's go and see what we can find. Now that is quite possibly my quickest signal ever. That's where I started. I walked about eight feet and got that. I didn't dig it because there's no way I'm going to be able to, certainly not at this exposed position, be able to dig and uh, with one hand keep you out of the wind. So for the moment, I'll just show you what I find until I get out of the wind. Um, it's some sort of buckle or some sort of latch got this little catch on the back, a little lug on the front. Um, it's either going to be off a door or off of some kind of leather fitting. Don't think it's particularly old. It's probably 100, 150 years old potentially, but I'd love to think it was medieval, but I doubt it. On to the next. That one sounded like a big piece of shallow iron, and that's exactly what it was. That is a hammer. See the shape of it? It's got a, what do they call it? Is it a ball and pain hammer that's got that sort of, um, almost like a pickaxe on one end and a, and a sort of hammer on the other? That's where the shaft would have gone. And uh, I don't know, how old do we think that is? Could have been owned by Robert the Bruce maybe, back in the 1300s, but then again it might only be a hundred years old. We'll never know. This came through like quite a strong signal. Initially I thought, oh, it's some sort of brooch or such like, but it's not. But what it actually is, I don't know. It's almost like a cog, but it's got this kind of, uh, almost like a wind vane on the back or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's got a funny colour to it as well. Uh, maybe it could be off a children's toy or something. Or something with a clockwork mechanism. Who knows? Mystery. This seems to be the day for mystery items already. I'm only 10 minutes in. Um, what is this? It's made of lead. And it's got these lugs. One here. And well, in fact it's only one. I thought there were two. It's only one and it's got this sort of twisted end but it's made of lead. I have no idea what that is or what it would even be for. Any ideas? And we've got another thing. This one though says copyright at the top <laughs> and it's got a sort of triangular look to it. It almost feels like bronze but it must just be heavy copper, thick copper. But it is not going to be particularly old. 50, 100 years at the most. This one is 100% bronze. That is bronze. That is a piece of sort of waste. Bronze from metalworking. Very, very heavy for its size. Green colour. There might be a little bit of copper mixed in with it, I'm not sure. But it is definitely too heavy not to be bronze. Um, might be a sign of metal working could be any kind of age really could even be three or four thousand years old but it's a good sign let's keep on hunting another one of those moments where you think you've got your first coin and it's a button it is another of these dandy buttons these oversized buttons that were popular with young men in the 1760s through until the 1820s, 1815s. They think they went out of fashion. 
they would wear these elaborate huge buttons they would have been decorated gilded in silver and gold um, basically dressed up to the nines but they didn't have a lot of money so it was all quite cheap stuff and they would pair it up with uh, fancy waistcoats and bright coloured materials and they became known as the dandy boys and this is one of their buttons but it is definitely not a coin but it's a good sign someone was here 1760 to 1820 give or take so maybe they dropped some coins there's a little glimpse of the weather at the moment that's the rain on now it wasn't supposed to be on for another hour or two and it's going to get progressively worse now i've managed to find a little uh, a little mound of earth to my light and uh, to my left hand side to shelter behind so i can show you this little relic that i've found so what is it? It looks like it's got the letter I and R, maybe initials. It's definitely got a decorated sort of shape to it. You can see at the bottom it's almost like a moulded flower. It's hollow, but I haven't been able to dig the mud out. And as you can see, it is decorated. So it's definitely a thing. But quite what? I'm not sure. Possibly a Vesta case for putting matches in. It's obviously just broken and that's the bottom half. I don't think it's massively old because you can see a seam. It's two separate pieces joined together. We have another relic. Now normally, iron signals, unless they're on the surface, you can generally tell that they're iron. And the idea is that the, mis the machine discriminates iron because generally speaking anything that's been in the ground for more than a couple of hundred years that's made of iron in Scotland is going to have rusted away and generally things made of iron are also not particularly valuable however we have found a relic just popping out the surface like that I gave it a little kick a wee wee and out it popped and can you tell what it is? It is an axe head, or a large part of an axe head. It's iron. You can see the rust coming through in various places. But how old is it? Hard to say. You can see it's got a sort of scalloped edge there. Probably would be the same down here if there wasn't a bit missing. And you can see where it's broken as well. We've already had... Robert the Bruce's war hammer. Could this be Robert the Bruce's war axe? I doubt it, but it's definitely an axe head. And I'm guessing it's probably going to be at least 100 years old. But it could be a fair bit more than that. It's not the biggest axe in the world. It's uh, maybe been more of a hatchet size rather than a great big sort of lumberjacks, tree felling type axe. But either way, it's a find. I'll let me know in the comments. What I thought was going to be just a piece of junk. Turned it over. And that is definitely a figure. If not two figures or animals. In fact, is that a badger? A badger with a top hat? Did anyone else see that? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it looks like a badge of some description. Well, let's give it a rub up and see. Well, that is a new one by me. It's not a badger. I don't know, is that a dog or two dogs or two foxes? I'm sure this will have some relevance to someone out there who probably remembers a, a kid's TV programme or cartoon. Or even a, a comic book maybe. Date wise, I'm guessing it's probably post Second World War, 1950s, 60s, maybe even into the 70s. You can see where the pin would have gone on the back. Before my time, I think. So let me know in the comments below. For a split second, the heart was racing. 
I thought, thank goodness for that, I've found at least one coin. That's always a mark of going metal detecting. Only to flip it over and find a little stub in the middle where the shank would have been. It is another dandy button. And I'm actually only about 10 metres from where I found the other one. The other one I found, that little strip of brown grass is actually a little spring. Fresh water coming off the hills and I was on the other side of that spring where I found the other one. So, <laughs> there we go. Probably going to date sometime 1760s through to 1815, 1820, give or take. Plain this one, I can't see any decoration. Bloody buttons. Seems to be a day for finding iron. So this was quite shallow, gave off a diggable signal and it's half of, or just over, half of a horseshoe. It's actually quite small. Um, you can see the, the arch, it would have been relatively narrow, so possibly it's off a, a small pony or it could be that it's older. You generally find that the older horseshoes got the wider they got and also the smaller they got because horses back in the old days, the medieval days, were nowhere near the size that you think of these big horses that you see today. They were quite small, stout, sort of hardy horses in comparison to some of the monsters that we have today. So, not particularly uh, great, but could have a bit of age to it. Could be a few hundred years or even more than that. Maybe it would have been better if it had been a whole one, but beggars can't be choosers. I've managed to find a reasonable sheltered spot and it's coincided with me getting a good signal. Please be a coin. Please be a coin. I think my prayers have been answered. Second spade full. What is that? If it's a coin, it does not look old. Might be silver though. It is silver. Ha <laughs> ha! It is a... It's a florin. It is a florin, I don't believe it. One florin. 1923, it's going to be gorgeous George, isn't it? George V. There he is. Looking to the left. You beauty. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, that's the measure of a day out metal detecting whether or not you turn up a coin and to turn up a silver coin, although it doesn't look it, um, is brilliant. Especially after the fairly junk day that I've had so far. Right, let's give it a clean up off camera and see. He is in pretty crusty condition, kind of. Georgius V, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith and Emperor of India. And the back is a little bit worn. You've got the three lions of England in each of these two banners. You've got the harp of Hibernia or Ireland. And you have got the rampant lion of Scotland. And at the top it says one florin, and on this side the date is 1923. I have never been so happy to see a coin, and I haven't had a florin for a while as well. So, great. I measure a day out's detecting by finding a coin. If I find one coin, doesn't matter how old, well, as long as it's not a spendable, then it's been a good day. So perseverance pays off because the weather is awful. So bad. I'm only in this tiny little area here because it's the most sheltered that I could find. And even then I'm struggling to film. But it's a coin and it is a silver coin. So I am over the moon. Someone can tell me in the comments what a florin was worth because... Being a post-decimal child, I've got no idea. I'm going to take a guess and say 20 pence, but let me know. Super, well done. Thanks, you've saved the day, George V. 
This is going to be my last signal of the day, I think. That little bridge there is where I'm headed. My car's parked over there. And I will be turning it off in a second. However, just here. We've got our final digger of the day. Let's see what we get. As I just mentioned, I am literally 10 steps from giving up. I've had a fairly dire day of metal detecting. I've had a couple of okay signals and okay finds, but certainly nothing impressive. Then I go and get the uh, silver, silver florin, which was, you see my feet, it was over there. And that was after about three, three and a half hours of searching in fairly terrible conditions. This one didn't actually sound amazing. It was it was not bad. Um, three spade fills down. And would you believe it? This is going to be my last signal of the day because there's nothing surely in the next ten steps. But do you see that right there? I've only went and hit double silver. It's a thimble, I think. It is. I've not had one of these in years. It is a thimble. It is a solid silver. It has to be solid silver. Look at the colour of it. I had uh, I had one and a half thimbles a couple of days ago on the Roman field. And now I've gone and hit a silver thimble. And that looks to be intact as well. That just sums up metal detecting for you. Persevere, persevere, and persevere some more. Just before I found the flooring, I was literally within a couple of minutes of, of giving up for the day. And uh, I was just about to give up and I'm making my way to the bridge and boom, silver thimble. So we've got a, it looks like a number nine or a letter G. Then we've got a C and an R. And then the rest of it, unfortunately, is just too worn away. But that is definitely a silver thimble. It can't not be silver because if it was, if it was not silver, it would be green. It would be wrecked. That is a silver thimble. Look at that. It's in pretty good condition. You can see it's it's been battered about a little bit. It's a bit misshapen, but it's not cracked that I can see. Can't see any obvious holes. It's actually a fairly reasonable size as well. Um, people keep telling me why these are in the fields and I keep hearing different reasons. Some people say that when they were harvesting the barley, the women would often wear them on their fingers. I doubt that. It doesn't sound right to me. Some people said that when they were harvesting, they were often putting the vegetables into hessian sacks these sort of heavy brown sacks and they would stitch the top of them that makes more sense to me I'm sure there's other reasons as well but do let me know in the comments I would guess it's probably going to be Victorian in date 1830s through to the early 1900s uh, could even be slightly later than Victorian could be Edwardian 1902 to 1907 give or take but that is a silver thimble to go with a silver florin and to save a bloody awful day from being not a bad day thanks for watching everyone give me a like give me a subscription if you haven't already and hopefully i'll see you on the next dig take care